session and then I'll tell you a little bit really briefly about me if this is the first time you've come to one of my events um, and then we will be doing the Ramadan presentation then we've also got Dr. Sabine here, mashallah, who's going to tell you from a health perspective how to stay healthy in Ramadan. Jazakallah khair for agreeing to do it. Uh, we'll do a brief Q&A. And then for the children, we've got the Ramadan quiz. We've got a Ramadan craft activity. Um, and obviously, we have lots of food uh, as well, inshallah. So we'll start. Nahmadu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma ba'd a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim So first of all, welcome to all of you for coming I know lots of you have come to the events before Lots of you already know who I am And for some of you it's the first time So um, most of you know that the, uh, my organization is called Cover Parenting some of you know me from the masjid where I did lots of activities before I started my own organization specifically because I wanted to help uh, women and children, women have uh, parenting issues or just strategies they wanted with their children as well as um, making activities for children so that they can have an enriching time. And these are photos of some of the activities that we've done over the half term holidays. Some of the children sitting here have already attended our activities, so they're really wide ranging activities. We have arts, crafts, pottery, um, activities in the half and full term holidays as well, inshallah. So the reason I started doing this is because uh, my vision was that every Muslim mother can be empowered to go from a stressed mom to super mom, right? Super mom doesn't mean you're going to get wings and fly like Superman, although that would be good, you could fly, yeah? It's just that you can be the best mom that you can be, especially we're living in the West, there's a lot of fitna, it's really hard, we're going through um, a really challenging time, so just to make it easy as possible for us. So this is why I created this community, so that we can have inspiring and informative community of empowered moms. And, and there's three things really that we need to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to be connected to the Quran, and then of course we need to be connected to our children. And the reason I have a picture of this tree is because if we don't have a connection with our children, uh, this will then go on to have an impact on when they grow up and they have their families and the environment they live in. And we see this um, every day in the work that we do in the masjid, especially when we get to the teenage age. We have lots of uh, moms and dads and they come to us and they've got problems with their, with their children who have grown up. We see it especially um, at weddings, at funerals, where people have issues and at that time it's too late to do anything especially i say funerals because we have we see uh, difficulties and problems that families are having with with their with their children because they neglected to do their you know what's their responsibility when those children were young so that's why we created sort of these activities that it doesn't have to be done in a boring way it can be done in a fun uh, and informative way inshallah okay so what is Ramadan? We all know the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned the benefits of Ramadan. A blessed month has come. Allah required you to fast in it. During it, the doors of Jannah Paradise are open. The doors of those are closed and the devils are chained. Therein is a night better than a thousand months. Whoever misses its benefit has surely been deprived. So sisters, you all know what Ramadan is. Or children, you all know you fast in Ramadan. Yes, what else do we do in Ramadan, children? Children, yes. Good, you do some zikr, very good. Anything else? Children, yes. Very good, you be kind, yes. You pray more. Do good deeds. Good boy, do good deeds. Yes, girl, yes. Loudly. You read Quran. Yes, so apart from fasting, you do all these extra things. And the reason why this is really, really important, sisters, is because sometimes, Islamically, Ramadan comes, there's three categories of people. There's the people who don't care and they carry on what they normally do because it doesn't mean anything to them. There's the people who do actions because they copy everybody else. So if some people are going to Tarawih in their family, they'll say, okay, I'll join you. But not because they really want to, just sort of more because they're the, anyway, somebody else is doing it. Um, and then there's a the third people to save themselves from the Jahannam and actually get the full benefits. And inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from this category of people that actually get the maximum benefit, okay? It's up to you which uh, category you go in depending on 
how you prepare yourself from now. So, uh, subhanAllah, we're only a few days away. Do you remember some of you were sat here last year? Yeah? Yes. One year is gone. You've got no guarantee that next year you will be sat here. Allah knows better. So, you know, treat it as if you treat it as if it's your last one so that you put your maximum effort in. This is how you should approach it, inshallah. Okay, so we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Ramadan and praised Ramadan from all of the other Islamic months and he sent the Quran down as he did with the other books as well. Um, I'm not going to go into the detail of the other books but we know the significance that Ramadan is also the month of the Quran. Yes, and that's why we have to put maximum effort in the Quran, the recitation, the understanding. Now you've got a unique opportunity this Ramadan, especially us living in this country, in the, in the UK, because it's the children's term holidays, yeah? In, in, uh, for, so for two weeks they'll be off in Ramadan. Please, please, as mom, don't just ignore this. I know everyone's tired and we'll talk about that later on, but just think from now, what are you going to do a bit differently because those two weeks you won't be needing to the school run of things. Inshallah, we'll be planning something from our end as well that your children can uh, participate in. Um, but start try and think from now. Okay, and then the month of Ramadan is that in which you reveal the Quran. The Quran is a guidance for the people with clear proofs of guidance. And it says that whoever cites the new moon of the month, let him fast. Whoever is ill or on a journey, then equal number of other days. He makes it up on other days. Allah SWT tells us he makes for us ease and doesn't want hardship or wants for us to complete the period and glorify Allah SWT for which he has guided you. And perhaps you will be grateful. And Ibn Abbas reported the Master of Wasallam was the most generous of people and he was the most generous ever during Ramadan when Jibreel السلام, used to come and meet him and he used to uh, come and revise the Quran with him and he was more generous than a swift far reaching breeze. So every year during Ramadan the Prophet وسلم, reviewed all that had been revealed to him with Jibreel السلام. okay especially for you the children who, who was Jibreel السلام? who was he? Yeah. Yeah. Good girl. He was the angel who brought down the revelation, yes? And the Prophet, peace upon him, used to, in Ramadan, revise all the Quran with him, yes? The, the Quran that he knew. Except the year before the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed away, he did this twice, okay? So as Muslims, we need to also uh, practice our Quran recitation and the study of the Quran as much as possible. Take away the lessons from it implement them in your daily life so i said this last year as well don't just read it try and read at least a summary of the translation it's really easy now we have so much information free on on the internet if there's a favorite speaker that you follow uh you, you know use them we'll talk later on about how we're going to set goals and things but start thinking now about the significance of the quran inshallah okay and the prophet sallallahu said in another hadith the verily the one who recites the quran Beautifully, smoothly, and precisely, he will be in the company of the noble and obedient angels. And for the one who recites with difficulty, stammering, stumbling through its verses, he will have twice that reward. So you can say, subhanAllah, that if there's a person who is struggling to read the Quran and he's, uh, you know, he's making mistakes or he's trying his best but he's finding it hard, don't think that that person won't get reward. Okay, if, you, if you're finding it hard and tricky but you're still making effort, actually you'll get more reward because it's not as easy for you but you're still trying. So especially to the children here, maybe you're not finished reading your Quran, maybe it's, you know, you're, you're still some way through it, maybe you're still learning. Just try and read as much as you can and as the best as you can, inshallah. Okay. Then of course we fast because Allah SWT commanded to, the ayah was already read to you about fasting. And in this verse Allah SWT states he is enjoined fasting in some form upon the earlier prophets as well. So it wasn't just our nation who fasted. And even in society today there are people who are not Muslims and they have different types of fasts. Yeah, you know that people have different types of diets and fasts as well. But for us, for Muslims, Allah SWT 
commanded us to fast so that we can become righteous. Yeah, we can get piety, we can get taqwa, we can get consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why we've been commanded to fast. So before Ramadan even comes, think why are you fasting? Why are you reading the Quran? What do you want from it? Yeah? Okay, so the purpose of fasting is to purify your soul, mend hearts, not just to stop eating and drinking. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he doesn't need us to stop eating and drinking. That's just your soul purpose, is to purify yourself as well. Okay, and we know there's lots of virtues of fasting. One of them is a shield from the Jahannam for us. And to stop us from doing other things, because usually when you're fasting, uh, you're a bit more conscious of what you're doing. So in the state of fast, you should be just aware, yeah, of, of, of not to do other sins. And we know we can learn how to attain barakah as well when we fast. And if somebody comes to you and you're fasting to start an argument or you're in a problem and you don't want to argue with them, just say, I'm not sorry. Right? If you're a girl, say, I'm not sorry. I'm fasting, I'm fasting. I, I don't want to know. It's better you do that and walk away than uh, corrupt your fast and ruin your fast. Let us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, deal with the person. So if it gets to that situation and you get quite hot and heated um, and you're already tired and hungry because you're fasting, uh, just remember this why you're fasting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the smile of the fasting person is more beloved in the sight of Allah than the smell of a perfume. So don't be conscious when you're fasting um, what you smell like uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is more better for you because obviously you're fasting for him and you're doing it for a reason. Also it's a time to make dua as much as you can um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to fast, to save yourself. First of all from Jannah, I mean sorry, from Jahannam, to save yourself from the Jahannam and we make lots and lots of dua throughout Ramadan for this and especially in Laylatul Qadr as well. And also to save yourself from the difficulties of the time. Sisters, if you've got problems in your life, in your personal life, your family problems, problems with your children, this is the time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. You can only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, nobody else. So do it at this time, every day. Think of the times when you open your fast, when you are in Tarawi, when you're in Qiyam, when you're doing Ruhu, when you're doing Sujood. When you're doing Sujood, you are the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last third of the night. It's a really good time. So try and maximize this time. It's also mentioned in a hadith that the person who feeds a fasting person at the time of opening fast will receive the same reward as the fasting person without there being any decrease in your reward. So if I want to feed uh, another person who is fasting, that will subhanAllah give me my reward, their reward, but it won't, you know, it won't lessen uh, the reward because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most generous. And so. When I say that, you, you should do that generously, but also think about, you know, these days we have a lot of fasting parties as well. And if you do this every day, then you're sort of spoiling that time in which you could be doing maximal ibadah. So sort of think how often you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it as well. Okay, so there's no limit in front of, for Allah SWT for the reward of the fasting person. For some things, we know what the reward is. So in Ramadan, when you read Quran, for each letter, how much reward do we get? Ten. Ten, good. Yeah? Ten. But for fasting, so some of the things we know, but for fasting, Allah SWT hasn't told us the exact time of the, uh, the exact amount of the reward, because that's up to Allah SWT. He can give as much reward as He wants to, okay? And then we know that in Jannah and Paradise, there's a door called Ar Rayyan, and this is going to be the door for the people who fasted to go through this door. Okay, so this is another thing. And don't fail to get the blessings of fasting. Just get maximum blessings as you can, inshallah. By, by fasting, fasting with a good intention, doing loads of dua. Okay. And when some people read this hadith, don't think that fasting is more virtuous than salah because salah is the most virtuous of all the different acts of ibadah. Some people think when they read the hadith, oh, it means 
as long as I fast it, you know. And some people, subhanAllah, even fast who don't pray. So think about that as well. That, that Salah is the most virtuous. Obviously, it's one of the five pillars of Islam as well. So just think about that. And of course, I'm going to briefly mention, use this time to make du'as and as far one of the children said, Sisters, we, I know you're busy, we have lots going on, but du'a and as far, you can make this, like whatever's going on. Yeah, you can just say it. You don't have to really be in a certain position or in a certain place. There are certain times when it's better for you to do it, but continuously you can be making du'a because you're a fasting person and you can be making as far. And uh, one of the other things is to think about your intention. We all know actions are based on intention. Yeah? So think about what your intention is. Intention is one of the things, sisters. I can't see your intention. You can't see anybody else's. Only Allah knows your intention. So think about your intention before you do any act of ibadah. Like why are you doing it? Who are you doing it for? And what do you want from it? Also think about the environment that you're in. Some things you can change, sisters. Some things you cannot change. Um, so let's go through some of the pictures. The friends at the top. Um, you can choose your friends. Yeah? Inshallah you are with good friends. <laughs> if you have friends who aren't that good, think about in Ramadan if you want to be around their company or not. Okay, because the reason I'm saying this is Islamically you are supposed to surround yourself with, with the righteous people. So think about that when it's coming up to Ramadan. Um, think about the husband and wife. This husband's really good, mashallah, is preparing the iftar with the wife. <laughs> but just think about your relationship um, with the husband and wife and whether you, what you're going to do in terms of your routines, whether you want to be work, you don't work, school run, things like that, so just to prevent you getting upset or tired or whatever after afterwards when, when the routine starts. As a mom, uh, the first mom looks really busy. She's got two children, she's taking them to school. Some things in your environment you can't control. You have to take them to school if they go to school. But some things you can. Okay, so this is my point here, is think from before, which things do I have to do and which things can I stop doing and which things can I make easy for me. For example, if you're working, can you be more flexible? Can you work from home? Can you get home more early? Can you do a bit of ibadah when you're at work? How you, what are you going to do with your lunch shower? Yeah, some of you work, you, have the, you still have to get your lunch shower. So use this time to rest or obviously do your salah, do your ibadah, just depending on where you are. Um, and, and it's time to sit down and do a start. If your kids are studying or at school, when they come back from school, what's their routine going to be? Is it going to be the same as what they normally do? Or are you going to do something different? Are you going to let them sleep, wake up and do ibadah together as a family? Think about that from now, inshallah. Also set goals. I can't emphasize this enough. I say it every year. If you do not set goals, you won't do it. Or you'll do it a bit enthusiastically in the first 10 days of Ramadan. You get, in the first couple of days, everyone's excited. They say, oh, it's Ramadan. You start getting really nice food and then your energy starts running out and everything you started doing a lot of, you start decreasing. Then you get to the end. You don't really do anything and then suddenly on Laylatul Qadr, the masjid's full, everybody's back in, trying to do ibadah. Try and do small, consistent goals. So decide from now what's your one, two or three goals. How many times are you going to finish Quran? One time, two times, three times? Write it down. You know what your capability is. Nobody else knows what your ability is. Some sisters can do it once. Fine, some sisters can do it three times, fine. That's between you and Allah SWT, like your intention and your capability. If you're doing it once, there's 30 days. Are you doing one juice a day? If you are doing one juice a day, when are you reading the juice? Write it down before Ramadan and stick it up on your fridge, on your, in your bedroom or on a calendar somewhere. When, when are you going to read it? Are you going to read it after every salah? Are you going to read it in the morning when you've um, done your suhoor? Are you going to do it? At Maghrib time before you open your fast, while you've got some time, or you're in the kitchen that time. We should try not be in the kitchen at that time. That's a crucial time when our uh, du'as are going to be accepted, inshallah. So we should be doing maximum ibadah at that time. Okay, and that's all. So it is just a reminder for um, the moms and for the children. If you've never met me before, do keep in touch, inshallah, and I'll be proud.
posting the uh, pictures of the event as well afterwards. So do comment if you enjoyed it, inshallah. I'll now hand over to Dr. Sabine, who will just briefly go through Ramadan from a health perspective. Then we'll do the quiz for the children, inshallah. Jazakallah. So today we're going to talk about healthy Ramadan and how we can make it productive in terms of its effect.